Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Company also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night. For that each week at this time, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. The press do the men in your family think flavor is the most important virtue of the food you serve? Well, you homemakers know that nutrition is equally important. And that's why Parquet, the quality margarine made by Kraft, is so popular with so many American families. For Parquet margarine is a wonderful red ration stamp value in both flavor and nutrition. It requires just five red ration points a pound, and it has a delicate, appetizing flavor that really satisfies. As a spread for bread and a seasoning for hot cooked vegetables, I think you'll agree that Parquet flavor is just about top. Cakes and cookies taste better when made with parquet margarine, too, because it's a real flavor shortening, and you like it for pan frying because it doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. What's more, parquet is highly nutritious. In fact, it's one of the best energy foods you can serve, and it's a reliable year-round source of vitamin A. So for flavor, for economy, and for good nutrition, ask your dealer for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. Summerfield in the great Gildersleeve. It's the last day of May, just four weeks before his wedding day, and Gildersleeve is a busy, busy man. This morning, while others make preparations for the Memorial Day exercises, the great man is in his study, straightening out his affairs and clearing the decks for matrimony. So we find him now with pen in hand, laboring over the composition of a mighty document. I, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, being of sound mind and body, to hereby devise and bequeath. Uncle Mort, excuse me. Yes, Marjorie? And see it. Come out and see what? The flag. We've got it up. Oh, well, a little while, my dear. Right now, I'm... Oh, come on. You aren't doing anything, and it looks so pretty. Not doing anything. My dear young lady, I happen to be engaged in one of the most solemn duties of a man's lifetime. You know what I'm writing? Oh, fool. Everybody thinks it was your last will and testament. Now, come on. But, but, hey, hey, let go. Come on. Well, let me put down my pen first. I don't know what there is such a rush about anyway. I've seen the flag before. But we found a new place for it, and we want you to see it. Oh, where? We hung it from the roof. How did you ever get it up there? And Leroy climbed out the attic window. Come out in the yard and tell us if you like it. Well. We want the place to look nice when the parade goes by. Oh, and Leela's coming over, too. Good. So then. And Bertie's planned a wonderful lunch. There. Do you like the flag, Jack? How does it look to your artistic eye, Uncle? Well, it looks fine, Leroy. Only for heaven's sakes, be careful out there. Don't worry. Isn't it pretty? I think ours is the prettiest house on the street, don't you? Yeah, but I wish Leroy would get down off that roof. Get off of that railing. Oh, I can't look. Young man, you get in off that roof before I come up there after you. Are you kidding? <laughs> Leroy, you heard me. Okay, I'll down. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Be careful now, my boy. Oh. Uh, that crazy kid. Honestly, what comes over, boy? I don't know. It's a wonder to me he's lived as long as he has. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. i got to get back to work. Hey, call me when it's time for the parade. Oh, we won't be along for an hour yet. Uh, parades, tightrope walkers, more interruptions. People just let me alone till I get this will finished. Will. <laughs> Leroy's the one who should make the will. The great Con Calino. Oh, brother. Let me see now. I, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, being of sound mind and body, do hereby devise and bequeath to my lawfully wedded wife... No. To my dearly beloved wife. Mm -hmm. My dearly beloved wife. <laughs> Come in, beloved. Hi, Gildy. Yep. Hooker. <laughs> what do you want? What on earth are you dressed up for? An admiral? I'm leading the parade today. Grand Marshal. Just stopped over to ask if you wouldn't join us. In the parade? Yeah. You mean march? Yes. On foot? Well, I suppose you could go on your hands and knees. <laughs> oh, no, Judge. I'm not much on marching. <laughs> My feet. 
You've got to, Gildy. All the younger men are gone this year, and we want them to have a nice turnout. Well, I guess I can certainly keep up with you, you old ghost. I'll tell you, I'll do it on one condition. What's that? If you'll help me with my will. You're drawing up a will? Sure. Got a little start on it right here. It's it. I thought Morton T. Gildersleeve being a sound mind and body. Gildy, mind if I ask a question? What? What makes you think you're of sound mind? Huh? <laughs> and look at that body. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind the priceless wit, Booker. You don't want to help me, don't. Now, Gildy, I should be delighted to draw up your will for you at any other time. Right now, I've got to get down to City Hall. How about this afternoon? Well, all right, then. See you down at the parade. Oh, uh, Gildy, there's one thing that just occurred to me. Yes? On second thought, you might prefer to have another attorney handle your will for you. Why, Judge? Well, I don't like to bring this up, but we're old friends, aren't we, Gildy? Yes, we are. We've been through a lot together, haven't we? Yes, yes, we've been through all that before, too. What's on your mind? Well, you may not be aware of this, but under the law, it is illegal for persons witnessing or drawing up a will to be beneficiaries. I merely mention this. Why? Well, we're such old friends, and we've been through so much together, I just thought, if, if you should want to leave me some slight remembrance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Judge, I'm going to leave you a lock of my hair. <laughs> Keep your shirt on, my boy. Parades never start on time. Isn't that right, Ben? I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. I thought we were just going to watch it go by the house here. Well, you are, but I'm going to march in it. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, what war were you in? Uh, I was in World War One, Ben. Oh, sure. Uh, did you get to France, Mr. Gildersleeve? I should say I did, my boy. Paris. Uh, I wonder if you'll get over there. I suppose I might. Yes. Well, if you do, I wonder if... Uh, Leroy, will you go help your sister for a minute? Help her what? She ain't doing anything. She's not doing anything. But that's what I said. Never mind. Go away. Go up. Uh, go upstairs and bring down that picture of me in my uniform so I can show Ben. Okay. Uh, and tell Marjorie to hurry down here. Ben will walk out of it. Yeah, fat chance. Uh, uh, <laughs> what was I saying, Ben? Uh, something about France, I think. Oh yes, yes. If you should get to Paris, my boy, I want you to go to a certain number on a certain street and ask a certain party if she remembers Monsieur Gildersleeve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bo Yank, she used to call me. Uh, will you look her up, Ben? Sure, Mr. Gildersleeve, only I can't speak any French to speak of. Well, when I first met her, I couldn't either. But inside of a week, comment ça va, parlez-vous français, le mot toujours le mot. You get the idea? Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> oh, she was a lovely creature, Ben. And her mother. Oh, boy, how she could cook. I think you'll like her, Ben. Oh, sure. She's a blonde, just 28 years old in 1918. <laughs> Let me see. That would make her uh, 53. Ooh, it's not possible. <laughs> oh, my goodness, how time flies. Boy Commando in person. Uh, I don't care to see it now, Leroy. 53. Poor Mimi. I can't believe it. Oh, Sasha, Uncle, what's the matter? Nothing. Go help Marjorie. For Pete's sake, aren't you through talking about Paris? Uh, Leroy, you're getting too fresh. Well, uh, that's Mrs. Ransom. We have a little signal. <laughs> uh, in here, Leela. Uh, good morning, sweetheart. I'll, I'll think the flag out in front looks just beautiful. Uh, Leela, I've got a surprise for you. I'm going to march in the parade. Why, truth, Martin, how exciting. Would you like to see his picture in uniform, Mrs. Ransom? Leroy, give me that. Oh, now, Shrock, Martin, I want to see him. Oh, why, you were cute in your uniform. Uh, cute? <laughs> Wasn't he bad? Well, just let it go, my boy. <laughs> On your uniform, Frog Martin. Both the dog used to have leash here on the shoulder. Uh, leash? Oh, well, I didn't go into the army at the top. I went in as a private and won my promotion the hard way. How'd you come out, Uncle? Corporal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta get started if I'm gonna be in the parade. 
The boys are assembling behind the courthouse at 11. Goodbye, Leela. I'm off to the war. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Rock Martin. What's the matter? You're not going to march in the parade in just that little old business suit, are you? Well, uh, uh, what else? Well, your uniform, Shirley. Oh, I couldn't, Leela. Oh, but you'd look so distinguished. It would look out of date, Leela. The uniforms today are entirely different. Oh, Rock Martin, you ne- never do anything I ask you. I do too, Leela. I just, uh, I just don't know where my uniform is. I know, Rock. It's up in the attic. Leroy. <laughs> Oh, it's good for you, Leroy. Please, Rock Martin, for Leela. Uh, all right. <laughs> Leroy, you come with me, little sharp eyes. <laughs> Trunk is it in, Leroy? This one over here, Uncle. Uh, that one? I haven't got the key to that. I guess we'll just have to let the uniform go. Don't worry, Uncle. It's open. Uh, <laughs> Mothballs. Come on, Leroy. Fish it out of there. I haven't got all day. Here, here's the pants. Gosh, they look a little small, Uncle. Uh, yeah, well, this stuff shrinks, you know. Yeah? Yeah. Besides, mothballs will shrink anything, Leroy. <laughs> well, I don't find any puttees in here. Maybe we'd just better let the pants go. Okay, here's the coat. Yeah, blouse, Leroy, blouse. Oh, blouse. Well, anyhow, it looks as if the morph balls cut that down, too. <laughs> what did I tell you? Yeah, well, I think maybe I can get into it, though. Here, hold my coat. Okay. Yeah, probably be a little tight, but it'll sort of give a military effect. See? See? I got it on. Yeah. Yeah, but can you button it? Oh, of course. Uh, you ought to remember that when I was in France, I weighed several pounds less than I do today. Are you kidding? <laughs> I George, it feels good to get back in the old uniform. Come on, Leroy, let's show the ladies. <laughs> uh, well, folks, what do you think of it? <laughs> What in the world happened to the trousers? They were shot off. <laughs> Leroy, quiet. Uh, no patees, Leela. Can't wear them without patees. Oh, well, the coat looks awfully military. Uh, I think you'll be the handsomest mine in the whole parade. I honestly do. Oh, well, that's all I wanted to know, Leela. Well, I'm off. Uh, I kiss your hand. Fair lady. Oh, don't bend over. <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't try to wear the pants. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. Meanwhile, instead of saying more about parquet, the quality margarine made by Kraft, I'd like to say right here and now, hats off to the man who sells parquet, your neighborhood grocer. If point rationing is causing you occasional headaches, remember that rationing is a major problem for your grocer hundreds of times each day. In fact, he deserves real credit if his disposition isn't tattered and worn, what with getting to work so early in the morning to arrange his stock for you and working far into the night every night to sort his stamps and plan his ordering. He has endless records and reports to fill out, too. Yes, your food dealer is an important workman on the home front, and he merits the help and the cooperation of all of us. You see, most of the foods he buys and sells are rationed to him, too. He has to budget his ration stamps in order to buy many of the things you buy from him. So why not help yourself and help him at the same time by planning family menus several days in advance and by shopping early in the week and early in the day? Your friend, the grocer, will appreciate it. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Clad in the conservative business suit, he's marched valiantly in the hot sun. And now he's arriving at his home to claim the soldier's reward. In this case, a share of the delicious lunch which Bertie's promised. But our hero's a little late, and the house seems strangely quiet. Marjorie, Leroy, where is everybody? Is that you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Of course it's me, Bertie. Where is everybody? Well, they're waiting for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. They waited about two hours before they had lunch. You've been marching all the time? Oh, yes, Bertie. I marched so far, my feet are killing me. 
When I'm so hungry, I don't care. Well, you just sit down and take your shoes off, Mr. Gillsleeve, and I'll warm up a nice lunch for you right away. Uh, thank you, Bertie. You uh... didn't you march so long, Mr. Gillsleeve? Well, it wasn't all marching, Bertie. We stood there in the park for a couple of hours listening to the speeches. But it certainly was impressive. Makes a man think, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'd like to be remembered by everyone. There's a man who did something for the city. Well, sir, you the head man at the Waterworks. Well, I'm Summerfield's 16th Water Commissioner, yes. But a few years from now, who'll know it? That's what I've been thinking about some sort of a monument for, Bertie. You mean like a statue? Well, I don't know. You think that'd be good? Oh, no, sir. I don't care much for statues. Huh? Now you take them two statues in the park. Every time I walk past Abraham Lincoln standing there, I feel sorry for him. Why? Because he's been standing there so long. Yes. <laughs> well, what about the statue of General Fremont? Don't you like that? No, sir. Every time I go past that, I get mad. But why? Because he's got a horse and I'm walking. <laughs> and he ain't even going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm afraid you just don't like sculpture, though, Bertie. Oh, yes, I do, Mr. Gillespie. You know what I like? What? That fountain in front of the courthouse with the water spraying down and the goldfish swimming around down below. I like that. So do I. By George, a fountain, Bertie. For a water commissioner, what could be better? With a little bronze plaque on it. Not too little. Let's see. Uh, this fountain presented to the city by uh, Summerfield's 16th water commissioner, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Then maybe some short, dignified statement like, uh, he served his fellow townsmen well. Sounds mighty pretty, Mr. Gilsey. Yes, sir. I can hear the water splashing in the fountain right now. So can I. Oh, my goodness, the gravy's boiling over. Yes. Yeah. Gravy? Mmm, Bertie, I'm starving. <laughs> well, hang on, Mr. Gilsey. You can't starve to death till you get that monument. Yeah, you're right, Bertie. I'm going to have Judge Hooker put in that fountain in my will right now. <laughs> Morton, let me ask you something. Why are you suddenly in such a sweat to make a will after letting it go all this time? Well, for one thing, I think it's a man's duty to make a will, for one thing. Yeah? What else? Well, uh, Leela mentioned it once or twice. Oh. And anyhow, I think it's a man's duty. If you can't tell, things can happen. Here I am about to get married. Gilly, it strikes me that you're preparing for marriage as if you were preparing for the next world. Now, see here, Hooker, that's not true. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I'm true, but I shouldn't have said it. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Time to draw up this will. I'm going to require certain information. Such as what? Well, to begin with, how much money have you got? <laughs> Don't you wish you knew? Well, I've got to know. What for? Gildy, if you want me to help you with your will, you've got to take me into your confidence. Well, all right, Judge. What do you want to know? I ask you, how much money have you got? None of your business. If I tell you, you'll tell everybody in town. Gildy, what passes between a lawyer and his client is strictly confidential. Uh, you know that. Come on now. How much have you got? Cash. Cash. Well, in the neighborhood of uh, $500. In the neighborhood? Yes. <laughs> Small neighborhood, isn't it? <laughs> it's all right, Gildy. We're neighbors. Oh, you too? Yeah, I'd be lucky if I could put my hands on $300 right now. Well, to be perfectly frank with you, Judge, I've got just 275 <laughs> And that's not counting the bills that'll be pouring in tomorrow. Isn't it terrible? Terrible, the way things are. A man's lucky if he can stay out of jail. Now, let's see. The insurance. Now, well, what about the rest? What about Leela? Of course, she has her own money. Yes. I'll tell you what I thought, Horace. I thought it'd be nice to endow a small memorial. A memorial? Yeah, a fountain, perhaps. A memorial fountain. Memorial to what? Well, uh, to the two of us. Me being water commissioner, I think a fountain would be kind of appropriate, don't you? You know, with the uh, water coming out. Throckmorton, may I ask what you propose to endow this fountain with? Well, with my residuary estate. With, the, well, the $275. Don't you think you could buy a fountain for that? Wouldn't be any Niagara. I think you'd be lucky to get a bird bath. Oh. You do, huh? Well, you know, Judge, you may think you're joking, but a bird bath isn't such a bad idea. Oh, now, Gildy. I mean it. I've always been fond of birds. Birds like me, too. They come right up to me sometimes. And Leela, well, Leela's crazy about birds. She's got a little bitty wren that's building a nest in her front porch right now. 
Every morning she goes out and peeks at it. Yes, sir, a man could do worse than have the birds remember him. Birds are man's truest friend. I thought dogs were man's truest friend. I'm not building any dog bath. <laughs> Horace, how soon could you get this will drawn up? Well, that shouldn't take much time. Of course, we need witnesses. I guess I'd get my secretary for one. Oh, and Peavy. Peavy, do it. I know he's open this afternoon because Leroy's working for him. Hey, do you think you could get it ready? What's the rush? Well, I'd just like to have it, Judge. I'm going over to Leela's tonight, and I'd sort of like to surprise her with it. <laughs> You'd surprise her, all right. <laughs> Leroy, how's the drug business? Pretty quiet. The chief is out in the prescription room, and you know what that means. What? <laughs> Leroy, that's no way to talk about Mr. Peavy. I'd like to see him for a moment, please. Oh, gosh, Uncle, can I wait on you? I never get a chance to sell medicine. But with you, it wouldn't matter if I made a mistake. Yep. <laughs> I disagree, my boy. Oh, just try me, Uncle. I can find you anything in the store. Practically. Then find Mr. Peavy. Uh, honest, Unc, the chief doesn't like it if I bother him about something I can handle myself. Leroy. What? Wake up the chief. Oh, all right. Maybe we shouldn't bother Peavy if he wants to sleep. What nonsense. Peavy sleeps 24 hours a day anyway. Oh, hello, Peavy. I hope we didn't interrupt anything important. No, no, I'll just take care of you, gentlemen, and then I can get right back to it. <laughs> How are you, Judge? Fine, thank you, Peavy. I saw you, gentlemen, in the parade this morning. Thought you both looked very dashing. Well, glad to do our bit, Peavy. It, how does it happen you weren't marching? Someone told me you were an ex-soldier. Yes, sir, I was in the artillery. 49th Field Artillery, USA. Well, I'll be darned. Were you a gunner? No, I wasn't a gunner. I, I was in what you might call the transportation end of the artillery. Oh, what's that? I commanded a platoon of mules. Yeah. <laughs> You? That's hard to believe, Peavy. Why, the mule is the stubbornest animal known to man. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Although a mule has a mind of his own, I'll admit, but they're hard workers. They are? Yes, they're hard workers. And they're loyal. Every mule in my platoon was just as loyal as a jackass could be. <laughs> Gildersleeve, can't we get down to business here? I haven't time to listen to Peavy's military experience. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Judge. I'm just running on. What can I do for you? Well, you won't make a penny on it, Peavy. We just want you to witness Mr. Gildersleeve's will, if you don't mind. Glad oh, to, Judge. Glad to be of service. Oh, Leroy. Yes, Chief? This is the type of service I was telling you about yesterday. Institutional type. Oh, yeah. Have you uh, got the document with you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Right here, Peavy. Get away, Leroy. This is none of your business. Unc, did you leave me anything? You've been amply provided for. Uh, sign right here, Peavy. Unc, will you leave me your pistol that's in your bureau drawer? No. Oh, please, huh? Now, Leroy, remember lesson one. The customer is always right. Oh, sorry, Chief. I forgot. All right. Now, here, Judge. That's it. Richard Peavy. Here you are, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I hope your will gives you the same lasting satisfaction as mine is giving me. Well, I hope so, too. <laughs> I executed my will in 1913, naming my wife as sole beneficiary, and I've never wanted to change a syllable of it. Neither has Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> well, I, I can imagine. Well, much obliged, Peavy. we got to be running along now. No, I'm going to close you up here myself in a minute. Leroy, you want to go along now with your uncle? Are you sure you can spare me? I think so. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Chief. <laughs> Good night, little beaver. <laughs> but soon, there'll just be two of us. Soon, you and I will borrow the moon. For just the two of us, sweetly and so discreetly, we'll be completely alone. No other world, only our own. Now we must be contented with schemes about the two of us. Yes, we can have our sweet scented dreams that 
will come true of us for oh, presently and pleasantly our hearts will be in a tune so soon maybe not tomorrow Lila but soon Lila yes Doc Martin I uh, made my will today Lila did you, darling? How nice. Yeah, have it right here in my pocket. Uh, Leela, you know something? What, darling? Guess who's in my will. Oh, I couldn't. Uh, go on, Leela. Guess, will you? Oh, I couldn't possibly. I'm too happy to guess. I'm too happy to care about anything. <laughs> Well, then, then I'll tell you, darling. Yes, you tell me. You know that little bird that has a nest in your porch? You know the one that sings under your window every morning? Oh, Dickie Bird. I call him Dickie Bird. Yeah, Dickie Bird. Now, Dickie Bird has been provided for, Leela. It's all right here in the will. Oh, Strasmont, that's just like you to remember little bird. Uh, see? It's all written out right here. Oh, darling, you have to explain it to me. I don't understand about wills and complicated things like that. Oh, well, sweetheart, in memory of both of us, I'm leaving money for a municipal bird bath. Oh, really, Throckmorton? You're the most thoughtful man. Now, I... did you say bird bath? Uh, yes, dear. You're leaving your money for a bird bath? That's right, honey. All of it? Uh, well, not all of it. All that's left after taking care of the children. You mean to sign my and tell me you've made a bird a residuary legatee? Leela, I thought you didn't know anything about wills. Well, I wasn't married to a lawyer seven years for nothing. <laughs> but, sweetheart, I thought you liked birds. I do, Throckmorton, but you're nothing but a cuckoo. <laughs> Take a little joke. You mean you were joking? Uh, of course, darling. <laughs> I'm not going to build any bird bath. Uh, tell me, how would you invest the money? Well, when I'm in doubt about a financial problem, I always ask myself, what would Beauregard do? Beauregard? Well, have you asked Beauregard what I should do about this? Uh, no, but I think I know what he'd say. What? He'd say, Leela, child, you'd look lovely in a mink coat. Hmm. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Music heard on this program was under the direction of Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, inviting you to listen in again next Sunday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. You women are looking for extender recipes these days and all kinds of ways to make the less plentiful foods go further. Well, do you know about the product called Kraft Dinner? All by itself, a package of Kraft Dinner gives you a swell macaroni and cheese main dish fast. Enough macaroni and cheese for four people. And for it, you put out just one single red ration point. Now, if you have a little meat or some leftover chicken or seafood, you can extend it by adding it to the Kraft Dinner macaroni and cheese. Or you can mold the hot Kraft Dinner into a ring and in the center serve your small amount of meat or what have you, cream. Each package of Kraft Dinner holds a quick cooking macaroni and some Kraft grated to put cheese flavor through and through the fluffy macaroni in a jiffy. Get some soon so that you can cook a macaroni and cheese dish in seven minutes or use it as an extender of less plentiful food. Remember, it's Kraft Dinner. This program has reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>